Hi everyone, how's it going? Happy New Year, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you have never been here before. to tell I'm in somewhere different this is my new home as you have probably guessed if you have watched any of my previous videos and I'm delighted to be here I think it's looking quite nice what do you think I'm not gonna do a proper tour because I'm gonna do that later and that's probably not why you're here but I just thought I'd point out my little gallery wall behind me which I'm very very pleased with and a whole load of trainers on <laughs> on the shoe rack down there I hope you guys had an amazing Christmas I certainly enjoyed some time off I'm currently filming this it is still December but by the time this comes out it will not be so just trying to get ahead of things a little bit because January is just always crazy especially in the health and fitness world so yeah just trying to get ahead be organized and start the year as I mean to go on so one of the questions that I have been asked a lot recently is how to run in the cold and dark and what kit to wear and what I would suggest. And um, there are lots of things that I can suggest, but this is slightly difficult because actually a lot of the clothes that I wear are no longer produced. They're things that I got a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. So I still wear them now, but it's not like I can recommend specific products per se. So what I'm gonna do is talk you through my favorite winter running gear in the hope that similar products are still available on the market um, or updated products of the ones that I currently wear. If I can find the similar products, I will link them in the description box below. Um, and hopefully that will help you find something that works for you. Although with things like shoes, it is totally individual. So the way that I run, might be quite different or will be quite different to the way that some other people run, which means that shoes that I find extremely comfortable might not be the same for others. But a good rule of thumb for shoes, uh, which I'll talk about in a little bit, is that they essentially should be comfortable straight out the box. You shouldn't really have to break in trainers anymore. Previously, you know, older styles maybe, but the trainers nowadays should be raceable straight out of the box. So anyway, without further ado, I'm gonna talk you through my favorite winter running gear and then you guys will have no excuse <laughs> not to get out running. Okay, let's start with leggings. As I know, that's something that can be so difficult to get right. Getting a pair of leggings where the, where the waistline stays up can be super difficult. But these are my three favorite pairs of leggings and there is a reason they're looking worse for wear it's because I wear them a hell of a lot, as you will know if you follow me on Instagram. So this pair here, these are Sweaty Betty Zero Gravity High Waisted Leggings. I think they still sell them, so that's kind of a godsend if you are looking for a pair that hold up well, both physically and on your waist as well. The second pair I definitely know are no longer in stock as they're about two years old, but these are Under Armour's Winter Running Leggings. They have a slightly thicker texture, which means that they're obviously much warmer against the cold. They're slightly lower waisted as well, but yeah, they work super well for me. And also I have to say, they basically held up a little bit better than the other the leggings that I have, possibly due to the fact that they're a thicker material, but they are not fraying anywhere, which is really good, unlike my Sweaty Betty leggings, but they're still working fine. The third pair are Two Times You, which are possibly my favourite leggings of all time, both for winter and summer. They're not specific winter running leggings, um, but they're compression leggings, so if you struggle with circulation, that can be really helpful. I absolutely adore this brand, uh, Two Times You, but you do need to get the right ones. I wear a size extra small, but also I think I would fit a small perfectly fine because they're obviously quite compression-y. These I wear <laughs> for kind of all races. I've got another pair of two times you as well that I love to wear for races. They just hold up really well and they're obviously made, these these people are a running brand, whereas these other two, you know, Sweaty Betty's kind of a, a fitness fashion brand and Under Armour is for all sports, whereas two times you just focus specifically on running. Okay, so on to bras. I, this isn't specific to winter running, but it is something that I get asked a lot about. So I just want to explain my favorite running bras very quickly. So top left is from ASICS. It's their highest impact sports bra and you definitely want to get high impact because otherwise you will damage your boobs and then they'll be saggy for the rest of your life. So we thoroughly recommend getting your size checked and then going to a shop and finding the highest impact sports bra that they have. But ASICS are very good with their running gear, especially jackets and sports bras. So I would recommend going to check them out if you are lacking. Um, the next one along, just on the right, is the 
Lululemon in light bra. I really like this, but it's really expensive. So if you're looking for something lower budget, I wouldn't recommend. But if you're looking for something that is super comfy and doesn't dig in anywhere, as you can see, it doesn't really have any seams. So it's very, very comfy. My lats tend to hurt a little bit if I wear a bra that's too tight, but they never do with the Lulu bra. Bottom left is from Freya. If you have bigger boobs, Freya Lingerie is so helpful. It's got underwire, which I don't have in any of my other bras, but actually it is so comfortable. It's also got something where you can clasp it to make it a cross back bra, which makes it a little bit more supportive. So yeah, I would really recommend them if you have bigger boobs and need something really high support. On the right here, we have one of my older bras, as you can probably tell, because it looks like it's melting into the table. This is from Under Armour, as you may be able to see from the um, sort of rubbed off logo at the front. I have three of these and I'm obsessed with all of them. They just work super well. They're very comfortable that you just slide them on over your head, whereas all of the others have clasps, which is useful if you want it for working out as well, because clasps can become painful if you're doing floor work and your back is against the ground, whereas the Under Armour bra does not have any clasps, so it's super comfy. And onto running tops. These are my two favourite base layers. I actually am going to show you a couple more in a minute because I really do think that they make the difference between being hot and cold and sweaty and dry. So getting the good base layer is so important to me. These two are both from Columbia, one of my favourite trail running brands. They know a lot about keeping kind of warm when it's cold and cool when it's hot. These both are perfect for that, they just temperature regulate better than almost any other base layer that I've ever had. This one here is a little bit warmer, as you can see in the bottom left hand corner it's got a silvery inside and that's supposed to reflect heat back into your body for when it's quite cold. The one on the right is slightly more comfortable because it doesn't have that so it's actually very soft. I'm actually not sure what it's made of but basically it just does the job so well as you can see it's kind of like slightly puckering in the center because I just wear it all the time and it is a little bit old but I think they do things similar to this I don't think they do this exact one so I'm gonna try and find one because I honestly think if you're gonna buy one thing to get a little bit warmer in the winter when you're running this would be one of them so big fan of both of these and then my other three favorite tops here uh, they look like little people lined up so it's kind of weird but all of these as you'll notice have half zips and having a half zip is something that I'd really recommend for something to go over the top of your base layer or if it's not so cold then just on your bare skin. All of these are super duper comfy in kind of order of their warmth as well. So this one on the left it's from Nike. It's kind of super old as well so but I'm sure that they'll do something similar to it. It's got thumb holes which is very very helpful if you get cold hands. You can put your gloves underneath as well and it just keeps your wrists that little bit warmer. What I was saying about the half zip is essentially if you start off the run very cold then having something zipped all the way up to your neck can keep you a lot warmer and as you can see all of them also have higher necks than my previous ones did and that keeps your neck warm which is super important for you keeping warm and then when it gets a little bit warmer on the run then you can pull down the zip and you cool down pretty quickly if your chest is exposed to the cold air. I would recommend getting one of these as well if you do lots of runs that are quite variable in temperature. The middle one is from Jack Wolf Skin. It does not have thumb holes. It can be used as a base layer. It's quite tight but that also keeps you quite warm because it just traps a lot of air. It's really nice. I've only had this one for about a year, but I have worn it to death. Although thankfully it's still holding up really well. On the right, we've got one from Bjorn Borg. I do not know if this is specifically for running, but that's essentially all I've used it for. Um, it is a slightly more fleecy material than the two on the left, and that means that it's much warmer. I would wear that over a base layer for a cold run. I've been wearing it recently when it's been about two degrees on my runs, and it has kept me nice and warm. Would really recommend getting a thicker one if you do runs that are around freezing temperatures. And of course the zip means that if you get too hot you can just unzip it and uh, you cool down. And it's got thumb holes as well which is super helpful. And we're on to our feet. Getting the right socks when you're running is very very important. Anyone who suffers from blisters will know this all too well. But these are my favourite running socks. They are not specifically for winter again but I thought I'd show them to you because I get asked a lot of questions. On the left we've got Falca. Falca is a socks and tights brand. It's not specifically for sports, but they do now have a sports section that is pretty good. But word of warning, it's quite expensive. Have a look in the sales, see what they have. These long socks here cover my ankles. And as you can see, I don't really wear any pairs of short socks unless it's very warm or very roady on my run. Um, the reason I wear longer socks is because it protects my ankles when I <laughs> accidentally kick myself inevitably. Or if it's really mucky, it protects my legs from getting very wet and muddy and gross. I tend to wear them over my 
my leggings as well because it protects the bottom of the leggings and socks are a lot easier to clean than leggings are. So those are Falca on the left and then the two in the middle are from Stance. Anyone who's a runner will probably have heard of Stance socks. I'm a big fan. Um, I also recommended them in my Christmas gift guide for runners. I recommended Stance socks because they're super nice and really I would say you can never have too many pairs of socks. That's obviously not entirely true but they're very helpful to have and these pairs are super comfy. They used to say further faster or faster further. No longer because we've worn them too much. I say we. Fian and I both have the same pairs. We don't share them. These are yeah stance as well and then on the far right we have uh, Runderwear. Another pair that I recommended in my Christmas gift guide. These are compression socks so they go up a little bit higher. They go up just below your knee. I don't necessarily think compression socks have helped me a huge amount on my running per se, but they do help keep my lower legs warm, which is obviously useful in winter, and also in in betweeny temperatures, so sort of somewhere between 5 and 15 degrees, if I want to keep my lower legs warm and dry, but don't really want to wear leggings, then I'll wear long socks with shorts, and it keeps my legs less muddy, a little bit warmer, and means that I can still wear shorts and keep warm, so I um, would really recommend for sort of in betweeny temperatures, where you want to wear shorts, but you don't want to be freezing cold. Runderwear isn't the only brand that does compression socks, but they're the only brand where I haven't found that they actually cut off my blood circulation rather than compress my calves. I don't know why that is, maybe I've got really big calves, but they are the comfiest compression socks they're the only ones that I can actually wear whilst running. Any other compression socks that I've got, I always wear after running rather than during the runs because otherwise I lose feeling in my feet. Okay, just so you guys know, I'm going to do a little try on at the end of the sorts of outfits that I'd wear for running in the cold. And they will be including these jackets here because a jacket is one of the most vital parts of a winter running kit. It's something that hopefully you can throw on if it's windy and wet, but also that should be very packable into any bag that you want to carry, um, which is why one of the many reasons why it's so important to get one that's specifically for running and the other reason is that they are far more breathable and something that I've struggled with on running jackets is that quite often they're made for exercise quote unquote not specifically for running so they might be a cycling jacket and in cycling you don't necessarily need it to be so breathable because you get so much more wind in your face so actually you can cool down much quicker that way but with running you just make so much heat that if you don't have a breathable running jacket it's game over you get very sweaty on the inside you end up feeling like you're wearing a tent and then you actually cool down really quickly and that can be very very dangerous especially if it's really windy um because it is a way that you might be getting might get hypothermia even if it's not actually that cold so getting a good running jacket is so important and i've tried <laughs> quite a few and these are my favorites so starting on the left this is Jack Wolfskin again one of my favorite brands it is the lightest running jacket possibly in the entire world <laughs> um it's probably not but it feels it it doesn't have any pockets it doesn't have a hood it doesn't have any frills at all physical or metaphorical it does the job it's slightly windproof it's slightly waterproof I would not say it is entirely rainproof but it keeps me warm over my base layer and any jumpers that I'm wearing and protects me from a little bit of worse weather than I would just wear sort of a base layer out in along from that is ASICS um, so this is going from sort of light to heavy in terms of jackets this is ASICS and that is the jacket that actually I wore for the Tokyo Marathon where it rained poured in fact the entire way and it was very useful it's got a hood which I rarely wear whilst running but actually it can be quite useful especially at the beginning of a run where you want to remain a little bit warmer does it have any pockets I don't know if it has any pockets I certainly don't use the pockets if it does because they're quite flappy but it does the trick and it is slightly warmer than that one uh, to the left but it is still very packable the next one along I'm gonna put a disclaimer here I have only just ordered it and I have not tried it yet but it is supposed to be a very windproof very waterproof high-vis jacket which I've been lacking. I previously had a high-vis jacket from Brooks but it just wasn't breathable enough so I'm trying a different one and I'm going to do a vlog soon on how to run in the dark and this will hopefully feature in that. So this is more breathable it's specifically for running it's from Odlo and I will be testing it out on some nighttime runs sometime soon and then I can give you a full review on that but it is more breathable it's got thumb holes I think so a little bit thicker than the two on the left um, and less packable but for slightly colder weather. The one on the far right is a taped seams jacket from Columbia. Again, obviously one of my favorite brands. It is quite
quite warm. So I wouldn't recommend wearing this on any run that is not entirely pouring down with rain or extremely cold. It's really, really waterproof. It is really, really windproof, but it is not really, really breathable. But as you can see in the middle, it's got those pockets on the front, which are very helpful for carrying things in when you run. They don't flap around at all because they're slightly higher up on the chest and they're on the inside. If you open those as well, there are air vents in the middle, so that keeps you a little bit cooler. So it kind of does the trick for colder and wetter, especially wetter runs. And it's got a hood. I would say this is my favorite jacket for either walking when it's very wet or running where it's very cold and wet. I am really already regretting putting these on my table. This will now require some sort of wipe down afterwards. But onto trail shoes, something, well, shoes in general, something that I get asked probably on a daily basis on my Instagram, which is the reason why I create these videos. So starting from the left, these these are the Hoka One One Clifton 6s. I think they have the Clifton 7s now, but I've been wearing these for about a year and a half. Could probably do a replacing. In case you're wondering on the side, those are nerve trackers. They track the way that you run. So you can fix your striding like I need to do. These have quite a big heel to toe drop. So if you are not into that sort of shoe, they probably won't work well for you. But they work well for me at the moment, although I think I want to go for a lower drop shoe. But anyway, that's something that I will be discussing probably at a later point. Um, having worn Vivo Barefoots for walking around all throughout the summer, kind of from the beginning of lockdown really. I find that higher drop shoes are now a little bit more painful on my ankles so um, that might be something I'll be changing but I'm gonna give a few other pairs a go first. In the middle and on the right are Columbia Montreal Caldorado 3s. These are both amazing. They're essentially they're the same shoe in different colours. I think the one on the right might be Caldorado 2 and the one in the middle might be Caldorado 3. Not entirely sure. As you can see I use them a lot and the reason that I have two pairs is because if one pair is soggy and wet and gross like the one on the right is, it means I still have another pair that are not soggy, they're still gross. <laughs> that are not soggy that I can run with. These are not the waterproof versions, but you can get their waterproof versions that are called OutDry. It's their version of Gore-Tex, but some people say that they prefer to not have waterproof shoes and instead to wear waterproof socks, which I've never tried before, but when I do, I will of course review them. There is another Columbia shoe that I am obsessed with, but unfortunately my pair ripped within a year of me using them, probably less than a year, no, about a year. Exactly a year, actually. That's quite annoying. I think you're not supposed to wear shoes for longer than, I don't know, like five hundred miles or something, don't quote me on that. I wear mine until they literally fall to bits. Because I don't do so much running that I'm going to injure myself by wearing the wrong shoes, I'm more likely to injure myself by doing something stupid. So the other pair of Columbia's that I really like are called the Women's Trans Alp FKT2 shoe. They have lots of different FKT shoes, you need to make sure it's the right one because I don't like all of their other pairs. If you are looking for trail shoes but want really the best ones there are, have a look at Innovate and Salomon. They're apparently really good. I've never tried them because I don't have any need to because I work perfectly well with these but basically those are the other ones that a lot of friends recommend and wanted me to tell you. So yeah, have a look at Columbia but also have a look at others. If I could give you one piece of recommendation for shoes is that they should be comfortable immediately. You should know that they're going to work for you. If they're tight around the toe box or if they are digging in at the heels or whatever it is, they're not the right shoe. You can't break them in. Well, you can break them in, but you're probably breaking your feet first. So yeah, I would recommend getting shoes that are immediately comfortable. I raced a pair of these ones here on the right. Straight out of the box, I did 34 kilometers in them. I had never worn the, the even the style before. This is when I first started wearing them and they were so comfortable that I just had to wear them forever. So um, yeah, you should be able to race them straight out of the box with no problems. And if you have problems, then they're not the right shoe for you. Okay, the penultimate thing I'm going to suggest for winter running is running bags. I get asked a lot why I wear a running bag. And to be honest, I don't know why I ever ran without one. Obviously for my shorter runs, I definitely don't need them. But for my longer runs, they are so useful. So starting on the left hand side, we've got the Asics 5 litre running vest, I think they call it. It doesn't have a bladder in it. It doesn't have have very much storage at all, but it works perfectly if I need to carry my keys, my wallet, my phone, an extra sh like little layer, like one of the jackets. It works so well for all of that. It doesn't flap around at all. I think it is made for kind of smaller bodies, um, which is so useful because a lot of running bags are kind of unisex and therefore quite big on sort of slight female bodies like miners. So this one's super useful if I do 
any run where I need to carry my phone and don't have a pocket that doesn't flap around, I will carry that because it doesn't really add very much bulk, but it means that I have spaces to store things. This one in the middle is a Jack Wolfskin six litre bag. It has got a bladder in it, which means that you can drink water directly from your back, which is very useful for all runs if you're going a long way. Uh, it also means that you can carry extra layers. It's got plenty of different pockets for lots of different things. So, you know, you can carry your keys and your card, but you can also carry extra layers for example if you're running somewhere and then walking back or you're running errands and you want extra layers it is so useful for that or if you start your run and you're extremely cold and you're wearing all of the layers and then you get too hot you have somewhere to put them rather than just around your waist it's basically a godsend it's got a little bit of high vis on the back as well so if you're running the dark it means that people can actually see you which I think is super important especially at this time of year on the right we have my original running rucksack which is from Colombia I think it's seven liters but I don't think they actually sell it anymore so you probably won't be able to find one of these except for second hand which you know now that I've seen what a good running rucksack looks like I do think that this needs a little bit of updating but as my first running rucksack it was so helpful it's got space for a bladder but doesn't have one that comes with it but that means I can move the one from there to in there if I need a, a, a bit of a bigger bag it is a little bit flappy if you're very small but there are lots of straps at the bottom where you can tighten it and yeah I just think it's super helpful if I need to carry bigger coats or I can even fit a pair of shoes in there I mean that it's like a TARDIS there's a lot of space so I would say if you're just going to be carrying not very many layers then having the five or six litre ones can be quite useful but if you need really a lot of space or you're running longer distances where you need food and all that kind of stuff as well having something that's sort of eight liters plus can be very helpful so those are all of my bags okay last but definitely not least is running peripherals I don't really know what else to call them things that make running a little bit more pleasant and that you won't know that you need until you try them on the left another thing that featured in my Christmas gift guide for runners is a buff essentially this is my ultra x one from my ultra with them and it is so useful a buff is something that you can wear around your neck and around your ears if you get cold and then once you warm up you can put it around your wrists and it really takes up no space at all but really makes the difference between being freezing and not freezing on a similar vein to the right of that is a jack wolf skin ear warmer headband type thing i wear these for all of my cool runs it is not sweaty it is not itchy it just keeps my ears warm Warm and my face warm like the top of my face my forehead warm and really makes a difference again between being kind of a little bit too cold and not a little bit too cold it is not that expensive and loads of different brands do them so yeah just have a look around find something that is made for running specifically because things that are made not for sports um, can be quite itchy if you try and wear them when you run just below that I have my running gloves that used to say Tokyo 2019 but the writing is fading a lot quicker than the memory will but these are good running gloves uh, these are from ASICS but I don't think I'd be very very surprised if they do them anymore but you can get running gloves from so many different places so if you run anywhere cold I would really recommend getting some again they take up next to no space but make all the difference between getting really cold and not getting really cold obviously the blood goes to our hands and then it goes back into the rest of our body so if it cools down loads at your hands then it's going to cool down the rest of your body very quickly um, and if you have Raynaud's uh, like I believe I do you will get very very painful hands and if you don't have gloves then it, it's really quite unpleasant I'd recommend getting some they're cheap and they make a huge amount of difference to running. Something that is not cheap and may or may not make a huge amount of difference to running is glasses. Glasses I have put under winter running because actually, although they're super useful for when it's very sunny, they're also super useful for really cold winds. So if you run anywhere that's seriously windy or where you end up crying because <laughs> the air is so cold, then having a pair of glasses like this can be really helpful. And then also obviously they double up for summer running. The two pairs on the right so the orange pair and the dark pair from Oakley's obviously Oakley's is super expensive so these might be things that you ask for as a present um I know we just had Christmas but I'm sure you'll have birthdays at some point they are so useful the ones at the front these darker ones obviously for very sunny weather and the ones at the back are supposed to increase contrast so if you're running through trails or places where there's dappled sunlight they can improve your sight for seeing you know things that are going to trip you up 
or you know stuff everything essentially they just make it easier to see where you're going or at least that's the aim the ones on the left are breaking my rule of going for things that are made specifically for running because actually they are made for cycling I believe but they're from a brand called Smith that do some very funky cycling gear very very smart they are photochromic which means they're light at the moment but because they've been up here in the quite quite bright sunshine they're going darker and darker so they basically start off light and then as you go into the sun they get darker so that's super helpful if you're out on a run in quite variable conditions and it also means that they function you know really well for just breaking the wind from your face or in the summer where it's actually really bright they don't go as dark as these ones front right they're kind of a good all-round pair of glasses but like I said these aren't cheap and if I hadn't done races where I'd kind of needed them or if I hadn't been gifted them by brands I wouldn't have any of those three probably but now that I have them I really like them so they're definitely a thing that you don't really know that you want until you try them and then you're like I need all of them so Yes, would recommend, but maybe only if you really need them um, or you're doing a race where you need a pair of glasses. Okay, so this is the kind of outfit I would wear if it was very cold outside, but not necessarily windy. So cold and sunny. I have on my Columbia base layer, these sweaty Betty leggings. They have a little pocket at the back, which is useful and it just about fits my phone, but I would not say that it would fit the majority of smartphones nowadays. I just have a Galaxy S9, so it's a little bit smaller. But anyway, this is super fleecy. Obviously, if it gets hot, unzip, very nice. Got my hat thing on and I've got these glasses for when it gets super sunny. <laughs> do I look like I'm in Spy Kids? I think I do. Um, not necessarily a good thing, but it does the job. And um, I'm not wearing my shoes at the moment, but essentially, obviously, I'd be wearing trail shoes or road shoes, depending on where I'm running. If it suddenly got very rainy, I'd probably wear a similar outfit to this, but with these glasses instead to protect my eyes from the rain and wind. And then I'd stick on this jacket if it was extremely rainy and I was going for a long time, but more like I'd stick on this jacket and this is the exact outfit I wore the other day actually and of course I would probably be wearing my buff and my gloves as well. Okay, next outfit is something that I'd wear for a warm but slightly drizzly run. This is an outfit that I've worn literally more times than I can remember. I like to match my leggings to my tops, but it is obviously entirely unnecessary. It does the same job, even if it doesn't look as good if you don't do that. So I've got my two times you leggings on, no pockets except for a little key pocket here. I would say that fits very little in and I probably wouldn't feel safe putting my key in that either, but still handy. Got my Falca socks on and underneath this I've got my Jack Wolf skin and of course that's a little bit cooler than the others because it's got this zip and then I'd stick on this windproof rainproof jacket and then to be honest if if it was a little bit warmer so say eight degrees ten degrees something like that this would probably come off pretty quickly if I was doing a longer run I'd probably have this on as well to stick in my jacket when it comes off and my phone and my keys and if it was a very long run then my phone charger and lead as well because that's very useful but this doesn't move around at all when I run it's not nearly as flappy as the other so it's very very comfortable um, but yeah this is this Okay, we're on to very cold weather gear now. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing the buff, I'm wearing the head thing, wearing the glasses. This is actually the exact outfit that I wore yesterday, minus the glasses. This is for if it's literally freezing or below. So I'm wearing my Asics rain jacket. I've got this Nike top and I've got a base layer underneath, one of the Columbia ones that keeps me very warm. Both of these obviously are unzippable, so if you do get quite hot, you can unzip it. I've got my Under Armour cold weather leggings here. As I mentioned, they're slightly lower waist than the others, but just as comfortable. And I've got stance socks on, as you can see, pulled up above my ankles to try and protect my poor little legs. And if it got very rainy, as it did during my Yorkshire Three Peaks challenge, then I'd put on my Tate Seams Columbia jacket, and then I would bring a bag. And if I had a bag, then if I got too hot, I could put these away, but they're really useful to have, or at least to pack away if you know that it's likely to rain. Very warm, you can stick things in the pockets here, and they've got vents in as well. So if you do get too hot, you can just open those vents. Well, I've got, got a phone charger in there, that's very useful. That's the other side, a mask, very COVID. So this is for a very long, 
very cold, very wet run. Got all of the gear on. I'm actually sort of overheating because although this room is quite cold, this is for proper cold weather. So I have all of this on. It means that if I do get too hot, I can take off these layers and put them in the bag or carry them with me if I know it's supposed to rain later into my run. Say it's a 20K or a 30K or more and you want to bring the layers in case you start to cool down because obviously as you get tired, you're less good at warming yourself up and it means that, yeah, you're going to need extra layers, especially if it's getting colder. Now, a lot of people following me probably will get much colder weather than we get here in the UK, so I'm not sure I can provide advice for like minus 10 or below. But one thing I would say is if you're starting off a run early in the morning and it's seriously cold, A, make sure to wear high vis, B, make sure to tell people where you're going, C, make sure to bring a phone charger if it's a long run. Our phones are notoriously bad at staying alive when it's cold during your runs. My phone died on my run yesterday. It was only 10 kilometers. It was like 70% when I left and it was gone by seven kilometers in, which was so annoying. But yeah, make sure to bring a phone charger, especially if you're going on a longer run. And then I would also say one thing that I do is if I'm doing an extremely long run, like uh, an ultra or something, and it's cold, I will wear trackies over my leggings. This is because I'm a total wimp when it comes to the cold. So a lot of you will probably be saying, oh, that's overkill. It's probably overkill for you. But I know that once I get cold, I find it really difficult to warm back up again. So I'd rather be a little bit too warm and then stick these in my bag and then be the right temperature, then start off cold, get colder and have to drop out. So it depends what you're like. To be honest, I'm a very cold person. A lot of people are not very cold people and they will be able to deal without having an extra layer on their bottom half. But the bottom half is quite often the bit that gets cold because obviously on your top half, you've got three jackets or whatever, but on your bottom half, you've only got a pair of leggings. So that's my personal piece of advice, but I'm sure that people who run in Canada and Alaska and other extremely cold places, Scotland, somewhere else, will be able to advise a little bit better on that. So if you do have any suggestions for running in in very very cold weather then comment them down below. So that is it for your cold weather gear recommendations. I apologize for the length of that. I wanted to explain what to look for in the gear as well as recommending the specific gear itself because I know a lot of the products that I recommend are not necessarily still available from those brands. So I wanted to make sure that you knew what to look for in an item rather than just the products themselves. Also, there are a couple of pieces of advice that I find useful when I am running in the cold. First and foremost is breathing through my nose and it can be extremely painful especially if you start doing it in the cold. I started doing it at the beginning of summer, so I had the whole summer to get used to it. It really helped my running, but one thing that it also helped with is heating up the air before it gets to my lungs. And one thing that I struggle with, which is especially bad, in these times is uh, breathing through my mouth, getting a lot of cold air in my lungs, and then coughing up my guts. And um, people don't seem to appreciate that at this time for good reason. Whereas I have found that actually breathing through my nose means that the air is warm by the time it gets to my lungs and I no longer feel like I have to cough for the first sort of three kilometers of my run. So that's something that I found massively helps. A lot of people have said that they have issues with dribbly noses uh, whilst running. And I'm sort of slightly apprehensive to give my advice about this because anyone who's not a runner will watch this and think that's disgusting. And maybe some runners as well, but it is a reality of running that as you run, your nose gets runny, snot goes everywhere. So one thing that I have found that works massively well for me and something that I've seen in a lot of the other members of the trail running community especially is snot rocketing. And that means closing one nostril and breathing out fast through the other one and make sure you do it not around anyone because it's not very nice, but essentially it clears your nose and over time, um, over the space of a run, your, no your nose will get totally clear. And so you won't need to keep doing it, but you just do it at the beginning of a run and it's quite helpful. Every runner I know does this, but now that I've said that, I'm really concerned that everyone's gonna be like, Flora, that is gross. So please do tell me if you do do this and please tell me if you think it's gross. I'd like to have a little bit of a <laughs> an oversight as to whether it is um, normal or just something that my disgusting friends do. So yeah, let me know. Other than that, just be safe. Obviously, as it gets really icy and really mucky, it can be difficult to stay upright. That's why I recommend trail shoes, especially if any parts of your run is on trail. Mainly, you know, obviously you're only going to be wearing trail shoes if your run is on trail. Basically, it just means that you can trust your feet a little bit more. You're more likely to injure yourself if you're changing your running stride to compensate for icy or wet weather. So having the right gear, having the right shoes can really help with that. And trail shoes, I honestly think are like 
a life changer for me when it comes to running. So yes, thoroughly recommend those. Icy weather wise, if you can avoid an icy morning, maybe that's a good idea. If you cannot avoid icy mornings, then try to stick to a path that have been gritted. If not, I do actually find that off-roading is less treacherous than on roads. I guess because roads are a lot flatter and if you have a layer of ice over it, it's gonna be extremely slippery. Whereas when you go off-roading, you get all the mud and the mud means that I run Ironically, it is less slippery than the ice, although really it's like the lesser of two evils. It's like, which one do you want? Um, for me, I would always go for the mud. That's kind of it. If you have any suggestions of your own for either gear or um, advice for running in the wet and cold, anything really, just comment it down below. I'm always interested to hear what you guys think. Obviously, I have only been running for probably for like two, three years now. So um, my experience is limited to that and my disgusting running friends. I love them so much. <laughs> um, so yes, please post your comments below. Give us a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Hit the subscribe button. There'll be so much more running content coming your way. I think I have literally like 15 videos lined up for you guys. I haven't filmed them yet, but I will. So, so much content. If you have anyone you want me to collaborate with, please do put it in the comments again below because I would like to collaborate with some people this year either in person or more likely uh, via long distance zoom chats that I can share with you guys so if there is an ideal collaboration that you would like to see just let me know that is it for this week thanks again for watching and I will see you next time bye